Okay, hello everyone. My name is Samantha uh, DiPietro. I'm one of the teen librarians here at the Levittown Public Library, and we are very honored to have um, a very special guest today, uh, Donna Calabro, who is going to talk to us about her experience over the last 40 years working in the animal industry, uh, specifically working as a veterinary technician and an office manager. Um, and she also happens to be my mother. So I am very, very <laughs> pleased to have her here. Um, so Donna, why not, I'm gonna lead, Go it over to you. So why don't you tell us first um, a little bit about your background and what you've been doing? Um, let's see, I've started in the, I've always loved animals. I mean, ever since I was a little kid, I've always had dogs, cats, hamsters, rabbits, guinea pigs, whatever it is, I've had it. So, um, and we've had a various, so from fish to, you know, anything that we we always love to have and enjoy and and just their company um i started out just i wanted to get into it i wanted to do something with animals so i started with kennel work um anybody can do that they go in they help the animal hospitals and you just clean kennels feed the animals take care of them you know take kind of clean up after surgeries and watch and i was very interested in it to me that was just a really good intro to it. You kind of know what you're getting into once you're there. Um, I then decided to go into grooming because I thought, well, let's try something instead of hospital wise, let's try grooming. Uh, I did like it. I really enjoyed it. But you have to remember, you're going to be wet most of the time. So, you know, dogs do shake when they are wet and you are you are mainly wet most of the time. But I enjoyed it. I really loved it. Went back into the animal hospital and decided I wanted to learn more there. Um, I did some schooling. I did um, Farmingdale and I took a lot of biologies. I loved science. I loved math. Um, so those were just, they fit right into the, the profession and, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I then decided I wanted to learn more. So I was always available to help during x-rays and during, you know, blood takings and holding and learning. And I learned a lot on, on hands-on instead of book. Um, in New York, I know you have to have a license in order to touch an animal. You have to, so, but I've never really got my license. Um, I really do recommend it because you can use that license anywhere. I mean, obviously if you go into another state, you have to do their state recommendations, but you can take that position and go anywhere with it. You know, all across the country, there are animal hospitals all over the world. If not even animal hospitals, I worked at the Humane Society for a time when I was in Arizona. So you can really build on that. Um, hi, yes. Uh, <laughs> dogs all over. Multiple animals in that household. <laughs> Multiple animals in this house, yes. I learned, you know, in Arizona, I did not need my license. So I was able to learn a lot more there. I was able to do x-rays. I was able to help during surgeries. I was able to take blood, uh, do injections, uh, dispense medication. So there's a really large amount of stuff that you can do in animal hospitals, whether, you know, you want to start and try, you know, start with, 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 kennel help and see if that's going to be something you like because you got to remember your patients have teeth and claws so it's a lot different than a human hospital but and you will get dirty you will get you know but it all washes off at the end of the day very nice um so a couple things uh let's start with um kind of like your kennel work so obviously you said that that's kind of where you started and sure. how you began um how did you find that like job did you apply somewhere was it um i did i looked in the local papers and i did apply um at at uh, an animal hospital that was starting they did boarding so they needed people to come in and feed the animals you know you're mainly working nights you're mainly working weekends I mean I was going to school during the day um taking care of a child to, during the day so it was easier for me to work nights um again 
the animal field is so huge and there's so many opportunities. If you're working during the day or going to school during the day, you can work at night. There's 24 hour emergency hospitals. There's, you know, so it's, it's a big, vast area to be in. Right. Now, would you say as far as obviously there are um, there are millions of opportunities because there's also volunteer opportunities compared to paid jobs, shelters, uh, charity work, you know, within like, you know, different organizations as well as animal hospitals. Um, do you really think as far as training wise that one is better or makes a difference compared to the other or are they pretty much all great opportunities for trying and learning? Um, as far as trying and learning, they're all great opportunities. You know, volunteer at your local shelter. They always need help, whether it's to feed the animals, clean up after the animals, walk the animals, help with adoptions. You know, there's, unfortunately, there's so many animals and not enough homes. It takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of, a lot of people to keep them clean and keep them going and just keeping them healthy. So, right. And then what would you say, obviously, you know, everybody thinks working with animals, they immediately go to being a veterinarian, um, you know, compared to a vet tech, compared to grooming, compared to other fields within the animal field. What would you say um, to clearly define what is the difference basically between a veterinarian and a veterinary technician? Like what is, what's the major differences? It's just like a doctor and a nurse. A vet technician is a nurse. So they are going to be doing the, the, the vet is going to do the surgeries, the appointments, they're going to, you know, recommend the medication. The nurse then is going to take the blood. They're going to run that blood work. They're going to fill the medications. They're going to take the x-rays. So, you know, and then the doctor would look at the x-rays and, and see what's wrong. So it's just like in human, it's doctor and nurse, it's vet and vet tech. Gotcha. Okay. And then, um, Let's go to when I know you were saying when you were living in Arizona that you did more hands on work as like a veterinary technician actually taking blood giving injections and things like that. So could you run me through what your kind of your typical day to day was like. There in a vet hospital, there's no typical day. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Always, you know, and 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 you know, especially now, you know, with this pandemic too, you know, they they aren't essential workers. Animals get sick just like people do, and they need care throughout the whole thing. But your normal day, you know, in a, an animal hospital, you know, you come in, you get ready for the day. You have we had appointments first thing in the morning. Those were mainly your animals that came in for vaccine vaccinations to keep them healthy. Uh, dogs get distemper parvo, they get rabies vaccines. There's so many other, you know, diseases that we want to keep them healthy. So there's vaccines for that. Cats, you have your feline leukemia, your FERCP, which is a feline ep epirespiratory. They're getting, you know, so this way they stay healthy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Usually then, you know, you have your appointments for sicker animals, the ones that are coming in with fevers and coughs and, and sneezing and allergies, you know, anything that a human can get, a dog can get too, which sounds kind of funny because yes, they can get cancer, they can get asthma, they can get allergies, they can get all the same things too. Right. Um, and what would you say uh, was the best part of your job and the worst part of your job. <laughs> Things that people need to be aware of because they're going to have to deal with those on a day-to-day. -day. My best part of the job, and I will give you the, the one that always sticks in my mind, was we were doing a, a cesarean section on a pregnant dog. And when you get handed that puppy, that lifeless puppy, and you actually bring that puppy to life, you actually get it to breathe. And you you hear that little whimper, that first little whimper, it just, it fills your heart. It just makes you feel so good because, you know, I, I remember that puppy. And I still, to this day, remember that one exact puppy because I worked on that puppy for a good 45 minutes before I got it to, to cry and, and lift its head and be on its own. And it was just, just so, you know, even the owners were so, so amazed at the amount of work that we put into it. They actually named the puppy after me. So, you know, sometimes, <laughs> you know, it's, 
you know, unfortunately, the worst is the sick ones, you know, and that's always going to be very heartbreaking. You know, I've worked in the industry so long that I've seen puppy, these people get these puppies and watch their whole life, you know, and then when it comes to the time that, you know, unfortunately, they're, they're sick, they're, they're not doing well, you know, it's, it's a very sad position at that part. Gotcha. So another question that I had too is, you know, they say the difference between working with people or working with animals is that people can tell you what's wrong and an animal really can't. So that's always something that I've always had a question on is how, how do you then tell what, how an animal is feeling or, you know, cause I, I feel like in the veterinary field, you also kind of have to be in a, de a detective in a sort of way. You do. And, and a lot of doctors, you know, we do things by, first of all, taking their temperature, looking over their physical, asking questions on the owners. So like the owners should know, are they eating c correctly? Are they, you know, um, acting normal? You know, what are the signs? So it's always good if, if an owner knows my dog usually eats a cup and a half of food. He's only eating a quarter of a cup now that, you know, something's wrong, you know, um, you know, we do, just like people, we do blood work. So a lot of things will be seen in the blood work. We do x-rays. They they can do CAT scans, MRIs on animals too, just like people. So it's amazing how far this field has come and what they can do for these animals. So yes, it is like a detective game, you know? And, and a lot of times doctors will try something, see if that helps. And if that doesn't help, we go to the next thing. We try something else. Unfortunately, it is because they can't tell you. I mean, they can tell you kind of, you, you, you know, they're limping, their leg hurts, they're, they're hunched over, their back hurts, you know, they're blinking with their eye, their eye hurts. So you can kind of know this, you know, and, and a doctor who's been in it for so long or a vet tech who's been in it, you, you see the signs, you know, when somebody's hurting, you know, it's just like an infant. They yeah. can't tell you they cry, you know, you, what, what's wrong. They can't tell you what's wrong. It, it, it's just like a pediatric, you know, and, and, and dogs are like toddlers, you know, they want, they can't talk, but they can get into a lot of trouble. Right. <laughs> um, and then one thing that you mentioned too, was uh, the different technology and how technology has changed over, you know, the amount of time. And um would you say, you know, how do you stay on top of that in the veterinary field? Do you find that you're still, even at, even if you've completed your schooling as a vet tech, I mean, obviously, would you need to take extra classes? Do you yeah. need certain certifications on certain machines or how does that work? Um, they, they do have to take CE um, credits. So it's extra um, credits that they have to keep up with. And it does, it keeps up with different types of foods. Foods change so much, you know, there's so, uh, like, you know, not even just your regular dog food, but they have food for dogs that have heart disease. They have dog foods for liver disease. They have dog foods for allergies. So all that changes constantly. So, you know, they have to keep up with that. Same with vaccinations. I mean, uh, just recently, the canine influenza was a big thing that came in New York, especially. Um, and so they had to, you know, vaccinate dogs for that. So things are changing constantly and they constantly had to update their schooling and update their, you know, uh, classes with CE credits. Gotcha. And CE stands for continuing education. Correct. Right? Correct just to clarify. Um, and then, uh, okay, so let's, let's go through some of your general um, working conditions. So um, obviously you were saying that there are a need for people in the animal field all over the place, right? Um, so do you feel that there's any place in the world that you couldn't do, uh, be in the animal field or that there's, uh, depending on the region, what is it um, certain animals are more in need? Like obviously in um, more rural areas, you might be doing more farm animal type work or in more in the city, you're doing more household pet type thing. Well, I mean, you're looking at all types of animals too. I just did mainly small animals. I also worked in an animal hospital that did exotic animals, which was birds, reptiles, snakes. 
Um, I, you got to look, there's oceanography that d deals with seals and mammals and, you know, all the ocean life. You have, you know, doctors that do wildlife. So if you wanted to work in a zoo, you have different <clears throat> you know, animals there that you have to learn. So anywhere in this world, you can go, you know, your rural areas, yes, you have your farm animals, your cows, your horses, your, your dairy and, and goats. There's, there's, a, there's so much that, you know, if you don't like dogs and cats, but you like horses, you can go into that field and deal with just horses. If you're afraid of birds or snakes, <laughs> um, you don't have to deal with that. You can deal with just small animals. So the, and you can go anywhere in this world, really anywhere in this world and deal with some, you know, that has to do, you know, you look at these rural areas that have a lot of um, dogs and cats that run in the streets and stuff. They still need care. They need, you know, medical care. They need, you know, housing. They need to find homes, loving homes. And there's all kinds of rescue groups that will help um, bring them over so we can find homes for them. And are there different certifications for the different groups of animals or is it kind of a general education for, for all of them? You're gonna get your, your biologies and your maths and all that and do that. That's going to be your general, but yes, there is different for different breeds because a bird is not going, you're not gonna take blood from a bird the same way you're gonna take a blood from a dog. It's a lot different and, and it's a lot harder on a bird than it is a dog. I could imagine. <laughs> um, and would you say that there are any limitations uh, on your personal or social life because of the nature of working with animals? No, not okay. at all. Because again, if you wanted to not work during the day and you're a night person and just want, there's 24 hours. So you can work that night shift. You can work on the weekends. You could work Monday through Friday. You know, it just depends on your schedule. You can usually fit pretty much anywhere. I mean, obviously animals need care all the time. Like it's not like, but there's, you know, schedules. So there's, if you're not going to be there, somebody else would be there, you know? Gotcha. And then um, obviously we talk about working in teams or working independently. Would you say that this is more of a job where you're working more in a team fashion or doing more solo independent work? You know, I've had doctors who work solo because they're working on farms and they're just treating, you know, but it's mainly you're working in teams. Somebody does have to hold and, and, and restrain an animal while you're working on it. Do you also find that there are certain times of the year that tend to be busier than others, or is it pretty much a constant flow of work? Animals are a constant flow of work, 24-7. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and in general, for students that are considering this type of career, do you think um, what type of interests, abilities or skills do you think would help a person to be successful in this type of uh, op occupation? You really have to love animals. That is like the number one, because if you're afraid of a dog, you're not going to do well in this situation because there are dogs that are aggressive. There are dogs that are super nice. You have to deal with all types, you know, and it's not, you know, I mean, you're not going to treat a cat and a lion the same way, you know, they're, they're a lot different, even though they're both in the same group, they're a lot different. And you really have to love animals and understand them and you have to be cautious with them too. Well, that actually leads into my next question about, um, you know, the safety to the to the to the worker, to the veterinarian or the or the technician. Obviously, there are safety concerns whenever working with animals, whether they're large or small. Um, what would you say are some of the things that you know people should be cautious about when working with animals, or or safety safety precautions that they should take? You always have to know the animal you're working with and be very on top of it and watch. You know, a dog is gonna show signs when he's aggressive. He's gonna lift his lip, he's gonna growl, he's going. So, you know, there's, there's ways of protecting yourself when you're working on them because they still need medical help. They still need care. So you put a little muzzle on them. It's not hurting the dog but it's protecting the dog and it's protecting you too at the same time. 
gotcha. Um, and then what, um, I know you said that there, the sciences and math were very prominent in this field. Is there any other um, type of um, coursework that uh, students in high school now, if they're interested in this field, should be focusing on or? It, biology, you know, which is your science, your math, you, you definitely have to know your math, your, um, your kind of algebra, you know, so this way you're, you, when you're dispensing medication, when you're, um, you, you gotta know. Oh, I, I would say math is also important too, because obviously the, the weight of the animal depends on, like, there's obviously yes. some sort of calculation that goes into that, right? Correct, correct. Gotcha. Um, and then what advice would you give a student who's interested in this career? What should, what could they be doing now to prepare themselves for going into this field later on, you know, whether it's college or beyond? You know, the best thing is um, if you, if you have a pet at home, go to the animal hospital when they, when it's time for them to go ask questions, you know, volunteer at a shelter, see if it's something that you really want to do. Um, you know, even if you just go and walk an animal, ask questions though, a doctor or a vet tech, they will be more than happy to answer your questions and help you and show you around, you know, and if you're really interested in it, you know, find, find something that you can do with animals. Gotcha. And then um, probably one of my last questions is obviously once you get, you know, the training that you need, I know we said in New York that you need um, a specific certificate in order to be able to, to work with an animal. Um, but once you've completed that, obviously you said, you know, animals always need care. So there's, there is a job market there uh, always. Um, how do you go about finding those jobs once you have their career? Is it, is it a certain places that you should be looking? Is it general wanted ads or how, how do that job market, how is, how do they look for candidates? I mean, when I was leaving Arizona and moving back to New York, I, I looked online, you know, there's so many more resources now to find a job, you know, back when I started this, I had to look in the paper. Now you have online, you know, you have, um, job markets, you have, you know, job fairs, you know, and they're, they're always looking. And actually, sorry, my last question <laughs> uh, uh, is, you know, what are some things that you think that people who are looking at these resumes or these applications, what do you think that they're looking for in people who want to work in that field? Is there anything specific that you think that people should highlight in their resumes or, um, you know, in their, in their technical skills? Um, I think, I think the sciences are going to be big and the maths are going to be big. So, you know, if they, if they have, you know, good study skills in those, if they really, um, have a good interest in animals, you know, and a lot of the volunteer work is going to really show on their, on their resumes if they've done that. Gotcha. So, so it is a good idea to, if they're just starting out to kind of do some of that volunteer work to at least be able to put it on their resume so that when they go do looking for a paying job, they've already had some experience. And I think, and I think it's also, so they understand you can't be squirmish in this type of business. Um, you know, dogs are going to make a mess, you know, cats are going to make a mess. You have to be able to understand that, know that you go home, you take a shower, it's done, you're good for the day, you know? So you definitely wanna make sure that you know that this is, before you go into the schooling and everything else, know that this is gonna be something you wanna do. Yeah, that's always a good, it, I always highly suggest uh, volunteering or, or talking to people in the field, of any field, because it really gives you a taste of what it's going to be like to make sure that this is something that you actually want to pursue. And, and some animal hospitals, you know, you really have to call around some of the smaller ones, maybe not, but like a bigger one, you know, or even they'll let you shadow for a day, go in and say, can I come in? I'm, I'm thinking about going into this field. Can I shadow for the day just to kind of see how a typical day runs? Obviously, again, there's no typical day that's at an animal hospital. Some days can be so slow and other days you just don't know, you know, what's going to happen next, what's coming in that door next. But at least you kind of get that idea of, yeah, this is something I can do. 
Awesome. All right. Well, I wanted to say thank you so much for Donna for joining us today. Um, and if anybody has any questions that they want to ask Donna or they want to ask um, the teen department, please feel free to send any question email at uh, teens at levittownpl.org and we will answer your questions. So thank you so much. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you.